page 10, over the hill to grandmother's house. Well, this looks like a mess. Let's take a look at this and see what we're getting into. Sometimes when you first look at a piece of music, you think, oh, I can't play that, and then you skip it. Well, look at it a little deeper, because a lot of times it actually starts to make sense. It's not quite as bad. Sometimes it is quite as bad, but still, look it over. Let's see what happens. Now, this is in 6-8 time. So there's six counts in a measure, but an eighth note gets a count. So all of these eighth notes, they're just, each one gets a beat. They give a little box there in the lower left side there where they're telling you how many counts each note gets. That's nice, but you should already know that. If an eighth note gets a count, and then a quarter note gets two, a half note gets four, a whole note gets eight, which you can't have a whole note because you're only allowed six counts in a measure. A dotted half note, well, that's the same as six, eight, you know, how many eighth notes is it worth? Is a dotted quarter notes three, which, that's all. As far as the notes go at the bottom of the page, you need to know those notes. In my opinion, you should know all of the notes in the music up to three ledger lines, three of them, above or below either staff, treble or bass. And the reason I don't go further than three is because when I see them in the music, if there's more than three, I can't glance at it and see how many there are. I have to stop and count them out and figure it out. Well, if I have to do that, I'm not going to bother to, to memorize them. What's the point? But I can glance at it and I can tell if there's three or two or one. So I, I know those notes. So in treble clef, above the staff, the top line is an... Uh, an F. Well, the first ledger line is an A because it's every other note. And the two ledger lines is a C. Really do know C. C is an important note. Well, you kind of use it as an anchor for a lot of things. So two ledger lines above the staff is a C. And then three is an E. And then the spaces are the other notes here. And then bass clef, you're going down where the bottom line is a G. And then one ledger line is an E. Two ledger lines is a C. Remember the C? Here, two ledger lines above is a C. Well, in bass clef, two ledger lines below is a C. And the three is an A, and then the spaces are the others. I suggest you just memorize these. So these notes they show at the bottom of the page, you need to just know what those notes are, because that's only going to about two ledger lines. Now, let's look this mess over. I'm going to take this a little different because of the way it's written. I'm going to start with the right hand, but I'm going to skip the first two measures of each line. Let's go to the third measure of the first line. You're up here. You're in this position. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hopefully you can get that. Go down to the third line. You're here. Here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, that's that D. And then in the last line, you're in the same place. Okay. Left hand, well, left hand, this is trouble. You see the trouble clef sign they stuck in there? Clef signs can change at any time. They can change in the middle of a measure. They can change anywhere. Just watch out. Trouble clef, that makes this F natural here. One, two, three, two, three. Second line is similar, and then the third line you're up here with a C, treble clef. Okay. So when I put the hands together in the third measure, the first line I'm here. Here, and then in the third line we're up here. So, so you work that out so you have an idea what the hands are doing. And then we go back and take a look at what... You have LH and RH. It stands for left hand and right hand. And this is the common in piano. We do this quite a bit. You can also, in a lot of music, you can use the stems to tell you which hand plays what. Because a lot of times they'll put, for the left hand, they'll make the stems go down. That tells you the left hand needs to play those. And the stems going up, the, the right hand will play those. Not all publishers do that. You can't really rely on it. But a lot of times you can. And here you, it works out. You can do that. So all we're doing is we're playing a C chord, a broken C chord. And you're starting down here. And then this C chord, and this C chord, and this C chord. We're 
We're just playing C chords, broken, one at a time. You don't have to go that fast. The point is, it, they're just broken C chords. You have to look down at the piano because uh, keyboard because you're moving around, but you should have the first two measures of each line memorized because they're just the first two lines is just the C chord and the last two lines is the G chord. And you're already in position then to go on. Whatever, whatever it is, the third measure, you're in position. So suddenly this, wow, big deal. Well, I think it's a big deal. Hmm. Uh, go through it, get the hands together, keep it as slow as you need to go. Make sure those eighth note pulses are even throughout. No hesitations. Because when you finish the first line, you're here. And you got to come down here. All the way down here. Well, you're only playing the left hand first. You're not playing both hands at the same time. So when you move, you're going to move. Focus on getting the left hand down where it goes. Just lift up and move. It's like taking... Like a phrase, move up and move, and as you're playing it, then you move the right hand. Don't move both hands at the same time. Now here, it's this way. So you do that at the end of each line. When you come back down, just get the left hand going first, and as it's playing, then you get the right hand where it goes. Because the beat has to be a steady beat. And once you can do that, then we think about the, as far as the articulation goes, pretty much connect it. They've got the slur line over here telling you to connect these. I suggest you pretend the slur line goes over the whole line. Connect the whole line together. Then lift up. So on each of these lines, connect each line together. You, can lift, you have to lift up to go to the next line because you got to move. Dynamics. Moderately loud is the only thing they give you. It's, it's not loud, it's just sort of loud. Well, supposedly it's a happy piece. You're going to grandmother's house, I guess. You have to take it at your speed. It says Allegro Moderato, which is moderately fast or quick moderate, or it has to be accurate. So you decide on how fast you're going to go. And again, on the DC Alfini, that sends you back up to the to the top to play the first two lines again. The Alfini's at the end of the second line. I think the end of the second line should have a thin and thick bar line because that's the symbol for end of a piece. This publisher doesn't do that for some reason on these, uh, but you can take a pencil and draw in the, uh, widen the second bar line, make it a thick one. Let's play this together very slowly to check the notes and the rhythms. I'll give us six counts. One, two, three, four, ready, go. Two, three, four, 
four, two, three, four, five to the beginning. Off. 